We're going to look at the Cartesian coordinate system in this video. When we think about a single variable x, or we think about solving for a single variable equation, we usually get an answer that says our variable has to be equal to a number. And when we want to display that, we can display that on a number line. A number line is going to start somewhere at zero. And as I move to the right on that number line, I go to the positive numbers. As I move to the left, I go into negative numbers. So if I wanted to display the number 3.14, I'd move to the right 3.14 units, however far that distance is. And I could draw either a point on the number line or make a little mark on the number line to show that's where that numerical value is. When you start dealing with multiple variables, then we can't necessarily display on one number line because we have two variables. Generally, when you deal with two variables, the variables are named x and y. However, you can use whatever variables you want. When you deal with x and y, oftentimes you have to get an ordered pair. We'll get solutions or we'll get numerical values for x and we'll get numerical values for y. And oftentimes they have to be at the same time. So we get x is equal to a certain number and y is equal to another number. When we do that, we can get what's called an ordered pair. So if x is equal to a number and y is equal to another number, we can write those numbers down in an ordered pair. When you do that, the x value comes first and the y value comes second. That ordered pair is what we're going to refer to as our point. So each point has an x value and a y value. This happens a lot when we're dealing with solving an equation with both an x and a y variable. Because we have an x and a y variable, what we do graphically to plot that ordered pair or plot that point is we use two number lines. Now the two number lines that we use are called the x-axis and the y-axis. The x-axis refers to the x variable and the y-axis refers to the y variable. Usually the two number lines, one of one we orient horizontally and one we orient vertically. Now, how this usually works is that the number line oriented horizontally is the x-axis, and the number line oriented vertically is the y-axis. And each ordered pair can be plotted on this two-dimensional grid. It's two dimensions because we can go left and right. That's one dimension. And then we can go up and down. That's another dimension. 
So two number lines gives us two dimensions. And just so that we're all aware, usually where they cross is the point called the origin. It's the point zero, zero. And that's the starting point for every time I try to graph another point. This two-dimensional system where we can graph points, that is the Cartesian coordinate system in two dimensions. If you had a third dimension, you'd add a third dimension. Oftentimes, the Cartesian coordinate system is often called the rectangular coordinate system because you can see the grid that's created is a bunch of little squares that can be made into rectangles. Another terminology that you could see is the Cartesian coordinate plane or the Cartesian coordinate grid. And you can mix and match as well. You could say the rectangular grid or the rectangular plane. All of those things are probably referring to the Cartesian coordinate system in two dimensions. So like I've hinted at, every point can be placed on this grid. Because the x is the horizontal axis, the x-axis is the horizontal axis, when we have a point with an x value and a point with a y value, we can use, we can move horizontally x units and vertically y units. So whatever value our x takes place, we can move left and right that many numbers. And for y, we can move up and down. Now, when we are moving left and right, positives numbers move to the right from the origin, and negative numbers you get by moving left from the origin. When you do vertical, the positive numbers, to get to positive numbers, you go up, and to get to negative numbers, you go down. So if we were to plot the point 4, negative 5 on this grid, what we would do is we would move 4 units to the right. And then we would move 5 units down. So we start by moving four units to the right because the x value is a positive four. Positive means to the right. And then we, from there, we move five units down because the y value is a negative five. Y value, you move up and down. And so you end up at this point down here and that point, which is put in red here, is the point for negative five. Every point, no matter what the x value and what the y value are, as long as the x value and y value are real numbers, can be plotted out in the Cartesian coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's plot some points. We'll plot the point 2, 4, the point negative 3, comma, negative 6, the point 0, negative 3, the point negative 1, 5, the point 7, negative 2, and the point 8, 0. Now I'm going to do this in Microsoft Paint. Obviously, you could do this by drawing. I already have a grid layout. And let's assume that the middle value where these two axes meet, the x and y axes meet, we'll assume that's the origin and that each little tick mark is one unit. 
So hopefully you can see that. So let's start with the point two, four. Going to the point two, four means I move to the right two units and then up four units. So the point two, four is going to be about right there. The point negative three, negative six means I need to go to the left three units and then down six units. And so I'll end up with the point down here. There, I've done those two in black. Let's use another color for these next ones. So we go zero, negative three. If I go zero in the x direction, I stay at the origin. And then negative three in the y direction would put me down three. So zero, negative three is this point in red. How about negative one, five? So that was in red, sorry. Negative one, five negative one in the x direction, up one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like negative one, five is this point that we have in red. Let's take another color. Might as well take purple in this case. Seven, negative two, we count to the right seven units. And then negative two in the y direction would mean we go down two units. So that's the point seven, negative two. And then eight, zero. Eight, zero means we go to the right eight units. and then down zero, which means we stay right on the x-axis. And that gives me the point eight zero. So there is the graph of all six of those points. Now, You'll notice, obviously, the six points I gave you are kind of all over. And that was on purpose. Hopefully, um, those things all make sense. Another feature of the Cartesian coordinate system is that because we have the x and y axes, the x and y axis, axes split the plane into four different quadrants. So quadrant there, the root um, prefix is quad, meaning four. And here's how we name the quadrants. In the upper right-hand corner, where both the x value and the y value is positive, that is quadrant one. And then we go around the quadrants and label them counterclockwise. So quadrant two is where the x values are negative and the y values are positive. Quadrant three is where both the x and the y values are negative. And then quadrant four is a positive x, a negative y. So these four quadrants are just simply a way of keeping track of where points are at.
Now we've already plotted these points. Now that we've plotted where each of these points are, now let's name what quadrant they are in. So let's look at the point two, four. The point two, four, as we graphed before, is this black point. It has both a positive x value and a positive y value. So the point two, four is in quadrant number one. I'll write that. Oh, no, I won't write that that way. I will write that um, with. Thing. just to the left of it. So quadrant one, two, four. Negative three, negative six is the other black point that we have down here. So labeling quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, four. You can see that this black point is in quadrant three where both the X and Y's are negative. So quadrant three is where the point negative three, negative six is. Now let's look at our next point, zero, negative three. Zero, negative three falls right here on the Y axis. What we do with points on the axes is we say that since this point is on the axis, it actually does not fall in quadrant four and also does not fall in quadrant three. So if it falls on an axis, like right on an axis where either our X value is zero or our Y value is zero, then we say that there's no quadrant, or we oftentimes just say none. So zero negative three is not on any, not in any quadrant because it lies on the y-axis. Let's look at their other red point, negative one, five. Negative one, five, well, that's quadrant two. For our purple points, seven, negative two, going out seven, down two, put us in quadrant four. And eight zero, once again, eight zero falls on an axis. So that is in no quadrant. I'll just write the word none as nicely as I can with a mouse. So eight zero is on a no quadrant. So you can see that each of the points that I gave you, we had a point on the x-axis, we had a point on the y-axis, and then we had one point on each of the four, or in each of the four quadrants. So that's the Cartesian coordinate plane in a very quick, hopefully, video. Hopefully you understand that. Now, I do wanna mention before I finish this video that if you do get into three dimensions, because we have three variables, then we're gonna be utilizing an order triple and a point which has an X value, a Y value, and a Z value, or whichever letter variables you pick. And that gives us a three-dimensional object 
typically it's much harder to graph in three dimensions on a screen because the screen is naturally in two dimensions. But you can sometimes visualize that third dimension. It gives you three-dimensional space like we all live in. So there is a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system as well. It has an X, a Y, and a Z. Sometimes people will orient it like this, where the X is supposed to be coming kind of straight out of your screen, and the Y and the Z axes are here. It's a little bit easier to see when you put planes in. Here it's oriented where the X axis is kind of going left to right. The Y axis is kind of going up and down. And the Z axis is kind of coming straight out towards you. So it's hard to harder to graph on a two-dimensional um, screen in three dimensions, um, but you can try to do it. All I want to say for this video is that this thing, these when you have three number lines, one is an x-axis, the other is a y-axis, the other is a z-axis, that still is the Cartesian coordinate system just now in three dimensions rather than two. And if you look at this blue sheet, you see the Cartesian coordinate system in two dimensions, which is just the x dimension and the y dimension. By the way, one more thing. You might say that's kind of a weird name, that Cartesian coordinate system. The word Cartesian came, came for, or comes from uh, René Descartes, who is a French philosopher and mathematician who lived um, essentially in the early 1600s. So if you're thinking, what's the cart in Cartesian? That's just named after René Descartes. And this was really important because with the Cartesian coordinate system, we could connect ideas, humans could connect ideas about algebra and calculus to geometric shapes and geometric objects. So this system allows us to connect algebra and calculus to geometry. And that's why it's such an important system to deal with. 